Hi everyone, my name is Aditya and uh, welcome back to Vehicle Dynamics Lectures. In the previous lecture, that is lecture 2, we introduced the kinematic bicycle through a case study. We looked at two use cases, one from the world of gaming and other from the self-driving vehicle industry. There we assumed the equations were given to us. We also took some time to go through those equations and now hopefully understand what they convey. In this rather short lecture, we will derive those equations of motion. So let's dive right in. Before we start the derivation, let's recap the variables, parameters and inputs to this model. O here represents the instantaneous center of rotation of the model. In other words, every point on the bicycle model can be thought of as rotating about O at the given instant. Delta is the steering angle, an input to this model. This is something we'd like our controller to tell us. Capital R is the radius of curvature of our center of mass. In other words, it's the distance of the center of mass from the instantaneous center of rotation. Capital R with a dash on top is the radius of curvature of the rear axle. It's the distance of the instantaneous center of rotation from the rear axle. V is the magnitude of velocity at the center of mass. This is what we would expect to receive from the longitudinal control steam. Beta is what we call as the body slip angle. It's the angle made by our velocity vector with the longitudinal axis of the bicycle model. Now, L subscript F is the distance of the front axle or wheel from the center of mass. Similarly, L subscript R is the distance of the rear axle or wheel from the center of mass. Psi is the heading angle and C of course is the center of mass itself. Now let's get our hands dirty and derive the equations of motion. x dot or dx by dt is the measure of the distance traveled per unit time of the bicycle model along the x-axis. Or in other words, it's the x component of the bicycle's velocity. We know our bicycle model has a velocity magnitude of v and that the velocity vector makes an angle of psi plus beta with the x-axis. So then x dot evaluates to v times cosine of psi plus beta. Similarly, y dot or dy by dt is the measure of the distance traveled per unit time by the bicycle model along the y-axis. Again, we know our bicycle model has a velocity magnitude of v and the velocity vector makes an angle of 90 minus psi minus beta with the y-axis. This then evaluates to V times sine of psi plus beta. Now let's look at how the heading angle varies, that is psi dot. This is not super straightforward. We will have to do some trigonometry to get there. Let's do that. If you look at triangle OAB, high school geometry tells us that the angle at the vertex O is delta. So if we divide the length AB, by the length OB, that should be equal to tan of delta. And I can express AB as LF plus LR, which is the wheelbase. I get tan delta equals LF plus LR by OB. Now, let's not forget what we're trying to find out here. We're trying to find out psi dot. And it's the, it's the yaw rate of every point on the bicycle model. We also learned in the last lecture that the motion of any point on a rigid body can be expressed as a pure rotation about the instantaneous center of rotation. So the velocity of point C, which is the center of mass, will be its angular velocity times the distance to the center of rotation. Now, if you write that down, that it equals the length OC times psi dot and that's equal to V. So now if you rearrange this, we get that psi dot is equal to V divided by the length OC. Looks like we're making some progress now. We now have psi dot expressed in terms of V and OC, but we still have to eliminate OC somehow. Let's look at the triangle OBC. Angle at the vertex O for triangle OBC is beta. Again, we know this from high school geometry. 
So OC is then OB divided by cosine of beta. We already know what OB is. It's LF plus LR by tan delta. And when we plug all of that in, we get OC uh, expressed as a function of LF, LR, delta, and beta. Plugging this into the expression for psi dot, we get that psi dot is V into cosine of beta times tan of delta divided by the wheelbase, which is LF plus LR. And if we look closer, we can see that the V cosine beta term is just the component of velocity along the bicycle's longitudinal axis, that is, along the length of the bicycle. So now we have this beta term. It's not an input to the model like steering or velocity. It's not a parameter and definitely not a state of the model. Our states here are x, y, the heading, and their derivatives. So we need to do some more math to re-express beta in terms of known entities. In triangle OBC, CB by OB is tan of beta. So we have an expression for OB in terms of beta and LR. If you remember, we had another expression for OB expressed in terms of delta, LF, and LR. Now, if we put all of these together, we get another expression that allows us to express beta in terms of the input to the model, that is delta, and the parameters LF and LR. Finally, Putting it all together, we get the equations we talked about in the last lecture. So what did we learn in this video? We used some tools from trigonometry and simple high school geometry to derive the kinematic bicycle's equations of motion. The kinematic bicycle was motivated and discussed in the previous lecture, that is lecture 2. With that, we come to the end of this lecture. Hopefully you've learned something new. And as always, if you do like these videos, please like, subscribe and share with people who you think might benefit. Thank you.